Good morning, and what a glorious morning it is as we celebrate uh, the very first Easter all those years ago and how Jesus was raised from death to life again. If you're visiting for the very first time, a very big welcome to you. My name's James, uh, and I'll give us a bit of a steer this morning. And what you can expect this morning is we'll sing some songs, uh, we'll say a, bit of, a couple of bits in call and response, uh, we'll hear the Bible read, and then we'll have a talk from that in the middle by Martin. Uh, but as we start, let me pray for us now. So Father, we thank you uh, that we can gather together in our living rooms all over the globe uh, and celebrate the good news of Easter. We thank you uh, that you sent Jesus to die for us, and we thank you that you raised him to life again. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way of life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He has defeated the powers of death. Jesus turns...
they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then, they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 49. That's Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 49. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning with Jerusalem. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Great. Well, I'm Martin Ayres. I'm the rector of St. Silas Church, and I'm so glad that you could join us this morning. Whether you've been a part of the church family at St. Silas for many years, or this is the very first time that you've engaged with us, I'm glad you can be here. And we're going to think together about the fact of Easter and the meaning of Easter and to help us with that, we've already had our Bible reading, which was uh, from Dr. Luke's account of Jesus' life and death. And he explains for us the events of what happened on that first Easter Sunday. Uh, but to help us think a bit about what it would have been like to hear that news for the first time, and to try and work out what Easter is really all about, I've asked a police officer to investigate things for us.
it sounded so simple. Chief Inspector Ayers said, find out the truth about Easter. Well, I've been looking into it and I just can't make any progress. I've got a bag of shopping, three eyewitnesses, and no idea what to make of it. It's 2,000 years since the events occurred. So how can I be expected to find out the truth? Maybe if I showed you the evidence, we could work it out together. They do say that two heads are better than one. And I'm sure that with a whole church, we should be able to do it together. So let me tell you all the evidence that I've got so far. So far, I've got these hot cross buns. I went down to the shops to understand Easter, as they are the only places open at the minute. And they gave me these. What do we have? Hot cross buns? Hmm. They taste great. But what does a hot cross bun have to do with Easter? Hell, Caesar. All right, yes, the Roman centurion, my first witness. We need to interview him to find out what he knows about Easter. You there, centurion, I need to ask you some questions about Easter. Who was involved? Who did it? And can you please explain the hot cross buns? Well, <laughs> look what we have here. I've got something you want, and you've got something I want. You want information, and I want a tasty snack to help me through my patrols. What say you give me those hot cross buns? Really? You can't be serious? These are vital evidence in a criminal investigation. Well, I have even more vital evidence, but that's going to cost you. Cost you one hot cross bun, to be exact. Well, fine, but it better be good evidence. Ah, thank you. Lovely. Now, what you call a hot cross bun is clearly to remember the cross. The wooden cross was our most serious device for executing criminals. It was my job to stand at the cross and make sure that the criminals actually died on the cross. I had seen many criminals die on the cross before, but I remember this Jesus fellow because he was different. He wasn't a criminal. There was really no reason why he should be punished with death. So he didn't die then? Is that what we're celebrating at Easter? That this good man got away and didn't die on the cross? No, no, he definitely died. I'm good at my job. I made sure he was dead. I pushed a spear into his side to make absolutely sure. We never take anyone off the cross unless we're sure they're dead. Because they're criminals, and that's their punishment. That's all I have to say on this matter. Good luck in your investigation. Ave. Oh, this isn't much of a mystery. We've got a dead man. We know how he died. We know who killed him. The mystery is, why are we still remembering a horrible death, a criminal injustice, 2,000 years later? Hmm. But we have learned something. The hot cross bond reminds us of Jesus dying on a cross. Hmm. But that isn't the end of the story, or the end of the shopping. They sold me these at the shop. I don't know why. Chocolate definitely isn't an essential item. Well, it shouldn't be. But why? Why eggs? But what's that got to do with this investigation? Well, I've got a second witness. Let's see what he can tell us. Peter, one of Jesus' followers, a fisherman. Are you there, Peter? Hello, hi, yes. I'm here. How can I help? Peter, what can you tell us about these eggs? I don't know what that's got to do with Easter. Well, eggs. I mean, eggs are because, because he's alive. Do you not know? He's alive. You, you, you give them to remember new life. <sighs> new life? What's that got to do with Jesus? He's dead, remember? And that's what the centurion said. He said he was crucified and nobody survived that. Well, yeah, yes, he, he was dead. And, and then three days later, he was alive. I, like, I saw him. I saw him with my own eyes. I touched him. I saw him eat some fish. Uh, I saw the hole in his side where the centurion put the spear. 
Hold on, pal. But what about the body? It's gone. It was. It wasn't. It's, it's not in the tomb anymore. What? That, that? That's madness. That's absolute madness. Someone call a doctor. This man's gone crazy. I, I'm not crazy. It, if you don't believe me, go ask Mary. She was there as well. I uh, suppose we better ask her. You don't seem to be making any sense whatsoever. Mary, are you there? Hello, yes, I'm here. Listen, Mary, this man Peter says that Jesus' body wasn't in the tomb. Is that true? I saw them put Jesus' dead body into a cave. Then a big rock was put in front of the cave. They even left guards there. That was on Friday. On Sunday morning, I went down to the cave to put some spices on the body. It's what we did back then. Well, when we got there, the stone had been rolled away. The guards were gone and the cave was empty. I was so scared, I ran away to find Peter. He saw the tomb was empty as well. Right, okay, so Easter is a time to celebrate a missing body. No, you don't get it. Jesus is alive. I saw him outside the tomb. Peter met him and saw him eat some fish. And it's not just us, 500 people. 500 other people saw him as well after he was dead. A real body. We can't all be making it up. Jesus is alive. He was dead, but now he's alive. That's what you remember with the eggs. New life, but new life from a dead body. Okay, thanks, Peter. Thanks, Mary. I need to go report this to my boss. This is just remarkable. I was skeptical at first, but all the evidence points to this, that Jesus really did die and has really come back to life. Crosses and eggs. Dead and alive. Amazing. Well, I better call Chief Inspector Ayers. Hello, Martin. Listen, I've been looking at this experience. You're not going to believe this. So let's tune back in. That was fun, but it wasn't just for fun. It also shows us what Luke wants us to see, that the facts of Easter are rock solid. It must have been a day with lots of different feelings. It must have been a day with lots of different opinions about who Jesus is and why did he die and where has he gone. But Easter is a time for facts. And it's been said before, you're entitled to your own feelings and you're entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. And we heard some mind-bending, life-changing, astonishing, wonderful facts that the women found the stone rolled away they found the tomb empty, that they met angels and heard the words from them that Jesus has risen. Then they remember Jesus' own words, that he would rise. Then Peter saw the empty tomb himself and he saw the grave clothes. And then Jesus came and stood among the disciples. He said, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. He said, touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And then he ate a piece of broiled fish. There must have been fish bones and a dirty plate left over. Someone had to do the washing up. And then they were convinced as they looked through the Bible with Jesus at how the whole Bible story pointed to God's forever king dying and rising again. These are the facts that have changed the world. It's the evidence that shows that Easter is real. It's the greatest day in history. Jesus rose from the grave. We're going to think about what it means in just a minute, but first we're going to sing together again a song that takes us back to that first Easter Sunday as people went to the tomb. Uh, See what a morning. Let's sing together. is 
risen from the dead See Mary weeping Where is she laid As in sorrow she turns From the empty tomb Here's a voice Brilliant. So we've thought about the fact of Easter, that it really happened, but what's the meaning of Easter? Let's just think about two massive things it means for us today. We all know that this Easter, there's a lot of difficulty, loneliness, worry, anxiety, frustration, sickness, poverty, grief and sadness. It's all around us because of COVID-19. And right into that speaks the message of Easter. It couldn't be more relevant. It means that we have a victorious king and a living hope. A victorious king and a living hope. First, a victorious king. Look at what Jesus calls himself to his disciples. Verse 46, let me read it again, but do have a look. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. What he calls himself is the Messiah. That's the Bible's name for God's promised rescuing king, his anointed one. For hundreds of years, God, God had made promises about this one who would come into the world to rescue people. And the disciples of Jesus had dared to hope that he was the Messiah. But when he was arrested and tortured and executed on the cross, their hopes were dashed, their dreams were shattered. But now he appears among them, affirming the message from the women, and he says, it is I myself, touch me and see. And the disciples go out from there and proclaim to the world the news that Jesus has won the great victory, the great victory over the greatest enemies of humanity, enemies that we could never defeat. As he went through death and out the other side, he took on and defeated sin and the devil and even death itself. This is great news for a time like this, a time when we know that we are vulnerable. Joshua Lederberg, the Nobel Prize winning biologist, said a few years ago, the single biggest threat to man's continued dominance on this planet is the virus. It's been very troubling 
to realize how out of control we are, that we don't control our world. Even Boris, our Prime Minister, coming down with the virus this week, struck down. And I guess most of us are choosing between one of two possibilities to help us understand and interpret the times we're in. One is that there is no God. Jesus wasn't raised. Now, if that's the case, we're all just accidental byproducts of chemical forces, and nobody is in control. And even if the entire human race was wiped out by a virus, look, one species come and species go. And there's nothing right or wrong about that. There's nothing good or bad about that. The universe is impersonal. It doesn't care. It just is. But here's the wonderful alternative that Jesus stood among them that day and said, it is I myself, look at my hands and my feet. He is the victorious king. And that means no matter how difficult things become today or how hard they become in the coming weeks, there is a powerful God in charge of the situation who is generous and kind and he is wise enough to know what to do. A God who offers that if we turn to him in suffering, he will give us hope and comfort and meaning. And Jesus promised that he will one day come back and put the world right. It's his world and he will make it new and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. The reign of this king will establish goodness and justice and everything that our hearts long for. It's remarkable when you think about it, how many of our own stories bring in this idea of a land struggling because the rightful ruler is away and longing for his return. In Lord of the Rings, it's Aragorn, who we meet as a ranger, but then we discover that he is the king who can unite the thrones of Middle-earth. In Robin Hood, it's the story that good King Richard is away fighting and evil Prince John is a tyrant and cruel and people long for the king to return. I think that's why here in Scotland, body Prince Charlie is such a legend. He only actually spent 14 months of his life in Scotland, but people were captivated by this idea that in a time of oppression, the rightful king could return and liberate people. People used to toast the king over the water. In Gladiator, Rome waits for Maximus under a cruel emperor. It's longing for Maximus because Maximus, with the dying wish of the last emperor, the good emperor, Marcus Aurelius, he appointed Maximus the keeper of Rome. In the Chronicles of Narnia, Narnia waits for Aslan to save it. These stories connect with something deep inside of us about yearning for a king to return. And the Bible shows us that it's because this is our story. It's the story of our world. That we live today under the oppressive rule of the great enemies of sin and death. But thanks to Easter Sunday, they are defeated enemies on borrowed time. Because Jesus is the victorious king who was ridden out from death and who will one day return as king. It's wonderful news. At the same time, it shows us that Jesus isn't just an optional extra. You can't just decide to add him into your life somewhere where you can fit him in, like you might a gym membership or Spotify premium. No, it's about him being invited by you to be your king today because you acknowledge that he is the rightful king and that one day he's going to come and judge everyone, the living and the dead. Thanks to his death on the cross, we know that he is a king who invites us to come to him today without fear. He is a welcoming king. He's a king who died to open the way so that we can come back to him. And if we do that, we find that he is a king we can trust in times like these. He's not a king who's standing far off, looking down at our situation and who doesn't care. No, we could never say that about him because he suffered himself for us and now he's crowned with glory. 
That's our first meaning of Easter, a victorious king. And our second thing that Easter means is a living hope. Jesus said, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and blood as you see, flesh and bones as you see I have. Jesus is showing us that he has smashed death to bits. And if he's done that for himself, he can do it for us as well. For this is the Jesus who said of himself, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. And the one who believes in me will never die. There was a column in the newspaper last week by Jonathan Sumption who said that the biggest problem that COVID-19 has exposed in us is that we're terrified of death. It's made us remember what we often choose to forget, that we are all going to die. Normally, it's unmentionable. He said this, We have acquired an irrational horror of death. Today, death is the great obscenity, inevitable, but somehow unnatural. And if Easter didn't happen, how do we understand the fear we experience of death? Well, we're just complex survival machines. And in that case, of course, death is devastating. It tears our loved ones away from us. And our love for them, if we think about it, was actually just a byproduct of blind physical forces anyway, designed to help our species survive. Not even designed, just there, because that's what they have done. They've enabled our species to survive. Without Easter, then, death really is our greatest enemy, and we are right to fear it. Friends, that's the backdrop against which to hold up the empty tomb and Jesus appearing to his disciples. Easter is real, and it brings us living hope because Jesus has smashed death to bits so that he can offer any of us, and he does offer each one of us, that if we trust him, death is not the end. More than that, to die is actually to gain. When we die, if we trust Jesus, we will go to be with him. And our future beyond the grave is the real life that we were made for. Not just a spiritual, ethereal life. Jesus was physically raised, and that means the world has good news at Easter. The physical world. The physical world has a future that is virus-free. And it means that you never need to fear missing out. Lots of us have FOMO, don't we? F-O-M-O. It's the fear of missing out. But for those of us who are Christians today, have you grasped that you can't miss out? The church should be a FOMO-free zone. Think about it. The best wine, the best meal out at the best restaurant in Glasgow is nothing compared to the great banquet that's waiting for us in the new creation. The best holiday in a five-star resort, the Sensatory Hotel, it will be forgotten in the rest that we enjoy in the new creation. When you go traveling and you, you see the best sights and places to see in the world, don't even bother taking photos. Put your smartphone away. Give up on the selfies. It's not, these things are nothing. They're just a foretaste of the natural wonders of the new creation and how incredible it will be. So we never need to think again about regrets, things that we wish we'd done that we didn't do. Because Jesus rose, our best days are ahead of us. It's not even just putting things how they were. I don't know about you, but in lockdown and isolation, I find myself thinking, I'm just so looking forward to things being how they were before. But if that's what I'm thinking, and if that's anything close to what you're thinking, then we are far too easily pleased. Before the coronavirus, we were already living in a world that was marred by death and sadness. It's not how things were meant to be. And Jesus offers us hope, not of a day when things will be back to how they were. Let's not settle for that. He promises us a future world where everything will be how it was originally intended by God before sin and suffering entered our world. So you won't just have the body you used to have. You'll have the body that you always should have had, the one you always wanted. 
And the highlight of the whole thing will be being with our king. Joni Erickson Tarder was paralyzed from the neck down in a tragic accident when she was 17. But speaking about the living hope that she has of a physical resurrected body, thanks to Easter, she says this, can you imagine the hope this gives someone spinal cord injured like me? Imagine the hope this gives someone who is manic depressive. Only in the gospel of Christ do hurting people find such incredible hope. Looking ahead to her future, she says, I'll be on my feet dancing. I'll rise on tiptoe. But somewhere, sometime before the party gets going, the first thing I plan to do on resurrected legs is to drop on grateful, glorified knees. I will quietly kneel at the feet of Jesus. I can't wait. Folks, COVID-19 has reminded us that we're not in control. Could we look to Jesus as the victorious king? COVID-19 has reminded us that this world is not what we were made for. Could we fix our eyes on this living hope? Jesus says in Revelation chapter 1, I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I think the question that he asks you and me is, will you trust me with your death? Will you trust me with your death? If you're someone who's never done that before, you can do that today. I'm going to say a prayer now. It's a prayer for all of us. It's a prayer that any of us could pray if we've been Christians for a long time or a short time. But it's also a prayer you could pray if you've never prayed it before as a way to turn back to God for the first time. Today will be a great day to do that. Let me say this prayer for us. Almighty God and loving Heavenly Father, we praise you that Jesus rose from the dead as your victorious King. This morning we recognize we have not treated him as King in our lives. We are sorry and we turn to you again. Thank you that Jesus our King died to save us. Thank you that you have given us living hope because he smashed death to bits and promises us a future forever with you. We accept that gift. Help us from now on, Heavenly Father, to please you with lives wholly renewed by your spirit, that we might bear witness with our words and deeds to these great truths and the whole world come to know this salvation and living hope we ask in the name of Jesus, our victorious King. Amen. Well, what's going to happen in our remaining time this morning is this. We're going to take some time now to respond to the Easter news together. And we're going to sing again. We're also going to pray as Andy and Annie Gemmel lead our prayers. And as we can't be together physically today, we've put together a little video of... Um, people in our church family expressing something of the meaning of Easter. We've also got a notice about a course we've got running on Christia uh, called Christianity Explored. That's coming up and we'd love to invite you to join us on the 21st of April, that's a Tuesday evening, through Zoom, wherever you are, so that you can hear more, you can ask questions and you can take a closer look at who Jesus is, why he came and what it means to follow him. Now before our next song, just to explain that it was written by Greg de Bleek and the new Scottish Hymns Band, and Greg and the band are, are based here in Scotland writing contemporary hymns that communicate these great truths in a fresh way for today. And our next song takes up these great promises of a living hope from the New Testament, thanks to Jesus rising physically from the dead. So that we sing together, we shall all be changed. Hands will be all you need 
to know of Jesus' perfect love for you. And we shall all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye, we will be changed. Yes, we shall all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Like the lightning in the sky, we will be changed. And I have heard the gospel of the Savior's love for me. It cannot be denied, no, it cannot be denied That Jesus gave his life so helpless sinners could be free Then he rose from the grave and he's alive Though this frail old flesh is not ready to receive it Yet we know and we believe we're going home Treasures down before my Savior's feet, and I'll rise up to meet Him in the sky. And a voice from the throne will declare that now forever God will live among His people every day. With no more to mourn, as our tears are long forgotten, and the former things of all the past. Let's pray together. We're going to thank God for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and we'll pray for our world and our nation in the current crisis and we'll pray for our church and for one another's needs. We can participate together in this at various points. I will say the words, Lord, in your mercy, please respond by saying, hear our prayer. Let's pray then. We thank you, Father in heaven, that through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, you have given us a living hope, an imperishable inheritance kept in heaven for us, and present protection by your great power until our, until our final salvation at the return of Christ. We thank you that sins are paid for, that death is conquered, that the gate to life is open, that the hope of resurrection is assured for those who turn to Christ. We thank you that all over the world people are turning to him to have life through the gospel. We thank you for your great kindness towards us in him. And we pray that your people everywhere, in every circumstance, would grow in faith, rejoice in hope and abound in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world and our nation in the current crisis. Gracious God, we thank you for your faithful love, your sovereign control over all things, your justice and your mercy. We pray that in your mercy, you would limit the effects of COVID-19. We pray that this catastrophe would make many consider their frailty, 
and seek your mercy and forgiveness while there is opportunity. We thank you for all those in government and positions of responsibility in our world and in our nation. We thank you for their willingness to take on difficult tasks and to work hard and endure criticism for the good of others. We pray that you would give to them great wisdom and patience and endurance for this difficult time. We thank you for those in our medical services and service roles everywhere in our community. We thank you for the patience and diligence of so many who are working hard and facing personal risk for our good. We pray for safety for all those in such roles, for encouragement and for perseverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in parts of the world where there is little health provision or where there is poor government, for those nations already weakened by conflict, for Yemen where millions are already on the brink of famine, for Sudan, for Afghanistan, for those with little possibility to limit spread by isolation, for Iran, for Bangladesh, for India, for those with very little advanced health care in so many countries of the world. And we pray for your people scattered throughout the world to be full of hope and overflowing in kindness and love for others and urgent in holding out the word of life to their neighbours. Please use your people to show your love to others and make your gospel spread all over the world as a result. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church and for ourselves. We thank you, Father in heaven, for the faith you've given us in Christ and the love you've given us for one another and the hope we share of resurrection from the dead. We thank you for the many practical and technological blessings we have that enable us to survive and to keep in contact with one another and with our neighbours. We pray that you would give to us a renewed sense of confidence in what Christ has done for us, a growing love for one another, and the ability to look not only to our own interests, but also to the interests of those around us. We pray also for urgency in speaking about the hope that you've given us to others. We pray for those among us who have particular needs known to us, and we pause to remember them before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we thank you, Father in heaven, for Jesus, our King and great High Priest, who has provided purification for our sins. We thank you that we have in him one who's able to sympathise with our weaknesses. We thank you that you've raised him to the place of highest authority over our world. We thank you that in him we can approach your throne to receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. We seek your mercy and our need is great. So accept our prayers, for we ask them in his name and for your glory. Amen. This is what Easter's about for me. Gardens. I love my garden at Easter time because everything's just new and it's growing and it's been dead and horrible all winter. And for me that's what Easter is. It's just that hope of a new beginning and new life in Jesus Christ. Easter to me means remembering what Jesus did on the cross for us. 
for me, Easter is standing at the Western Wall in Jerusalem and being totally overwhelmed when I thought of Christ's passion. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And for me, Easter is a hill outside Maybow watching the sun rise over the Ayrshire Hills and then also a loch outside in Fermland where we had bread and fish and in both places we ended saying the Lord is, is risen. risen he, he is, is risen, risen indeed, indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah For me Easter is a time to refocus on what's important and um, for me, Easter is a reminder that God is faithful and he keeps his promises. For me, Easter is a reminder that the way to God is open and we can all come to him because of Jesus. For me, Easter is a celebration of the greatest victory that was ever won. For me, Easter is the chance to reflect on the cross, the amazing love that was shown to me there, and the incredible hope of the empty cross. Love and hope. So powerful, this particularly difficult Easter. For me, Easter is the ultimate amazing grace where an innocent man died for me. For me, Easter is my confidence, both that Jesus is true and that I can approach God and I can know him and even be his child forever. Well, hello and a happy Easter to you all. My name is Robin Silson and I'm a member of the congregation here at St Silas. And hasn't it just been a great time tuning in together on this Easter Sunday? But one of the big questions that you might have is how do you follow up with what you've just heard? Well, one option is to join us on the first evening of our Christianity Explored course on Tuesday, the 21st of April. We're going to be doing it over Zoom and so you don't even have to leave the comfort of your living room. Christianity Explored is a great course that each week looks at who Jesus is, why he came and what it means to follow him. It's an opportunity to look at the evidence presented in the Bible and you can ask any question you, you want. Whether you're looking into spiritual things for the first time or whether you want to refresh on and update yourself with the truths of about Jesus. This is a great thing to get involved with. If you'd like to know more, then you can email the address that comes up on the flyer and somebody will get back to you with more details. I'm really excited about doing this and learning together. And so I hope to see you there. You're the Lion of Judah. You're the Lion of Judah, the Lamb that was slain. You ascended to heaven and evermore will reign. At the end of the age when the earth you reclaim, you will gather the nations before you. And the eyes of all men will be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified. For with wisdom and mercy and justice he reigns at the And the angels will cry, Hail the Lamb Who was slain for the world, ruling all And the earth will reply, You shall reign As the King of all kings and the Lord of all There's a shield in our hand and a sword at our side There's a fire in our spirit that cannot be denied As the Father has told us, for these you have died For the nations that gather before you And the ears of all men need to hear of the Lamb who was crucified Who descended to hell, yet was raised up to reign at the Father and the angels will cry, Hail the Lamb Who was slain for the world, ruling power And 
the earth will reply, you shall reign. As the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, and the angels will cry, hail the Lamb, who was slain for the world. As the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Well, I hope you've been encouraged this morning. I know I certainly have. It's been great uh, visiting together with you all and hearing about the risen Lord Jesus. Um, do stick around afterwards. There's some Zoom groups. If you're visiting for the very first time, there's a welcome group. There's some lovely folk uh, who would love to chat to you in there. Uh, if you're a regular at St. Silas, you know where to go after this. And let me close uh, with a prayer. So, Father, we thank you uh, for all the good news we've heard this morning. We thank you for sending your Son. Uh, we thank you that you raised Jesus to life again all those years ago. In Jesus' name, amen. God the Father, by whose love Christ has, was raised from the dead, open for us who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give us joy as we share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower us and fill us with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen.